welcome to a second example of changing the order of integration of a double integral. Notice in its current form, it would be quite challenging to integrate with respect to x first, and then with respect to y. So let's try changing the order of integration. Let's start by determining the region of integration. Notice the limits of integration for x are from y squared to 9. So that tells us that x has to be greater than or equal to y squared, and it also has to be less than or equal to 9. And we also know that y is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 3. Let's go ahead and graph this region. So here we have x is greater than or equal to y squared. Let's go ahead and solve this for y. So we'll square root both sides. We would have y is less than or equal to the square root of x. It would be plus or minus the square root of x, but since we know that y is positive, the square root of x would also be positive. So let's go ahead and plot some points. We'd have the origin, the point 1, 1. When x is 4, y is 2. And then when x is 9, y is 3. If we wanted to, we could switch this around y would be less than or equal to the square root of x, so it would actually shade below this curve. And we also know that x is less than or equal to 9. So here's where x equals 9. But we would shade to the left of this. And then for y, we know that y is greater than or equal to 0. And then y is less than or equal to 3. Well, here's y equals 3. Let's go ahead and label this point. This is the point 9, 3. So this would be our region of integration. Let's go ahead and label the equations on our graph. y equals the square root of x, or we could express it as x equals y squared. Of course, this was x equals 9. This was y equals 0. And now let's go ahead and see if we can switch the order of integration. Right, this is x to the 1 half, cosine x. And now we'll switch it from dx dy to dy dx. So because we're integrating with respect to y first, our lower limit of integration will be y equals 0. And the upper limit of integration would be this curve, but it must be a function of x. So we're going to use the square root of x. And then the limits of integration for x will be from 0 all the way to 9. Now let's see if we can evaluate this double integral. So the nice thing about this now is when you get respect to y, all of this is a constant. So we're going to have x to the 1 half y cosine x. So that was a much easier antiderivative to determine. And now, because we integrate the specs to y, we're going to replace y with the square root of x and 0. So we replace y with the square root of x. We're going to have x cosine x. And then when y is 0, this will be 0. So let's go ahead and finish this on the next slide. And we are still going to have to use integration by parts. Let's go ahead and review that. So if we let u equal x, this should work out pretty well. Let's go ahead and try that. If u is equal to x, that means dv would be equal to cosine x dx. So differential u would be 1 dx, and then v would be the antiderivative of cosine x, that's going to be sine x. So let's see how this works out. We're going to have u times v, so we have x sine x, minus the integral of v du, so we'll have sine x dx. So we're going to have x sine x, well, the antiderivative of sine x is going to be negative cosine x, so we'll end up being plus cosine x. 
we evaluate this at 9 and 0. So we'll have 9 sine 9 plus cosine 9 minus, we'll have 0 times sine 0. It's going to be 0 plus cosine 0 is actually 1. So we have 9 sine 9 plus cosine 9 minus 1. And that'll do it for this video.